Welcome to New House. I've been living in an apartment for about eight or 10 years and finally got a new house, so I've been cooking outdoors like crazy. Today I'm lucky enough to cook with Meathead from AmazingRibs.com. So happy to have you. I'm the lucky one. One of the things we love about Meathead so much is that he kind of shares our philosophy, which is understanding the hows behind the whys, right? There's a lot of old husband's tales about barbecue and we try to figure out, are they true or are they not? And we've taken a lot of cues from you, we've learned a lot from you guys, and uh, we've tried to apply the science to it and learn what works and what doesn't. What we're gonna really look at today is great backyard barbecue ribs. The kind of ribs that anybody can do at home and with a little luck, they're gonna be spectacular. And then we're gonna move indoors and we're gonna to try to replicate the process indoors. So all the bark, all the crust, all that beautiful smoke. Stop talking about it, I'm starting to drool. All right, all right. let's dig <laughs> into these ribs. Let's see what's going on. Let's do it. Cool. I went on amazingribs.com. I pulled up the last meal ribs with the Memphis rub, right? So I did my best to make that recipe. Tell me what you think. So let's take a look at these baby backs and see how they're doing. Here we got a couple of beauties here. They've got a nice deep red color with a little smoke color on them. Um, you've, you've used the Memphis major, dust rub. Major Memphis rub, yep. Right. When you put salt on meat, moisture from the meat and from the atmosphere melts that salt and it goes down into the meat. Yeah. But the molecules of garlic and paprika and sugar, these are huge long chain molecules. They never get past the surface. Rubs, spices are a surface treatment Salt is an inside treatment. Now there's a lot of rubs on the market. If you buy a rub that has salt in it, you're paying a lot of money for salt. So make your own rubs. You guys have rub recipes, yep. we have rub recipes. They're all over the internet. Make your own rubs, leave the salt out. So he put the salt on first, yep. then the rub. As it cooks, the surface dries out you have evaporation from the surface, the moisture. And so it dries out the surface and you can see. You would, you would think if you were new to ribs that the inside would be dry too. Yeah, but it's not. But it's not. But uh, they're still gonna this, be juicy. They're gonna be juicy and why? All the collagen. Yeah. And fat, the yeah. collagen and fat melt. And so you're getting your juiciness not from water, right. but from collagen and fat. Right. And so people worry about loss of water. Don't worry about it. There's That's so not much what makes water. it juicy. Something else I see that you did right, Grant. Yeah. That is spectacular. Keep it coming with the things I did right. <laughs> well, all right, let's start. I don't want to see bones sticking out. A lot of people um, like to see bones sticking out. Yeah, it's over. But if the bones have stuck out, that means the proteins have shrunk and the meat is shrinking and that's squeezing moisture out. So there's no bones sticking out, means you haven't shrunk the protein. You haven't overheated it's it. It's going to be moist. That's the redneck sous vide. Love it. You can't cook without knowing what the temperature is. And outdoor cooks are a bunch of knuckle draggers often and they just think, I don't need no thermometers. You can't cook without knowing what the temperature is. Ribs are very hard to measure the meat temperature because there's so much bone. But there's a really good alternative and we call it the bend test. And if you pick it up and you bend it and it cracks, you see where it's cracking here? That tells us she's a duck. Right here. And um, it's a good sign that we're about ready here. This is just a perfect baby back rib. All right. You did great, Grant. Good to hear. They're absolutely stunning. One of the other things I'm seeing is the color. Look at that beautiful yeah, ruddy color. Gorgeous red. This is the rub that went on there, and you can see how it's changed colors. That's paprika mostly yeah. that gives it that color, but the like smoke orange. and the juices and the fats and the melted collagens uh, have all mixed with the rub on the surface. The sugar is caramelized, and so you have this dried surface, which we call bark, which is dehydrated meat. It's just simply like jerky. It's dried out, and it makes this wonderful crunchy because the rub has married with the juices and the surface of the meat. And uh, it's absolutely just perfect. I love it. Love it. That's gorgeous. Now, you see the shine from the sauce, but you did right, man. You only put a thin layer of sauce. You've added one instrument to the orchestra instead of a whole bunch of trumpets. It's not going to take over. You've layered flavor. It's going to be really complex and elegant. And this one's no sauce. And I thought it would be a good idea that we taste one without sauce because when we go back into the kitchen and we try to create this, this style yeah. of food in the kitchen, we're going to compare um, your team's efforts and our team's yeah. efforts and see how close we come and sauce will just get in the way. You can see that it's a little tan in the center, but it's pink on the edges. 
And a lot of people think that means they're not cooked through. But if they weren't cooked through, they'd be pink in the center and tan on the edges. These, are all, these were cooked to almost 200 degrees. They are well cooked. What's happened here is gases, nitric oxide and carbon monoxide in particular, have gone into the meat and they have fixed the myoglobin, the liquid inside the meat, and prevented it from changing color. So it stays pink, and that's called the smoke ring. I'm already, I'm already I was gonna started. say, you're gonna I let me talk and I you're gonna just eat. just sit there and not, yeah. <laughs> Really tender, really juicy. This for me is perfect. I like them a little, little crunchy, but it is peeling right off the bone. A Little bit of sauce on that one. You wanna go mm, for that one? Mm. Who doesn't love ribs? This is such a delectable treat, right? I mean, it's a rib, Everybody rib loves treat. a steak. Everybody loves roast chicken, pizza. But there's just something about beautifully cooked ribs that is so sensual. It's got all the elements. It's got sweet, it's got tart, it's got unctuous, rich, succulent fat. It's so good. Yeah. Right? Whoa. Look at, look, look at how it pulls off the bone. Look at that. See how clean that bone is? That's what they call pulling off the bone, and that is a sign of a properly cooked rib. Perfect. Mm. Shouldn't fall off the bone. Mm. It's still meat. It should have texture like steak, but it should let go of that bone neatly. Mm. I'm just gonna keep going. Mm. So we made traditional ribs. They're pretty damn awesome. We got a few things to tackle indoors though, right? We gotta make bark. We gotta get perfectly cooked meat and we've got to get a beautiful smoke ring. I know that one's optional, but I just want that beautiful traditional look. My concern smoke is getting smoke, smoke flavor. How are we going to get smoke flavor indoors? That's a tough one. I think we're going to just have to tackle it. Let's go indoors. Let's do it. That's pretty. And look at you got like the nice golden amber yeah. brick red yeah. stuff. These, are all, these were cooked to almost 200 degrees. They are well cooked. Ooh. What's happened here is gases, oh my God. nitric Ooh. oxide and carbon monoxide in mm. particular, Whoa. have gone into oh my God. the meat, and they have God. fixed the myoglobin. The